What up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to episode number four today of the Road to Glory career mode with Crew Alexandra. Of course, with certain rule sets this time around where we didn't have it in FIFA 17. So, I looked at your guys' comments from the last video. There's a couple of comments in there. The most liked comment was on the topic of signing Wayne Rooney, of course. He's an England legend, former captain, now playing his trade at Everton. But I think we're a little bit away from being able to afford Wayne Rooney at the moment. So uh, we'll have to try and do that at some point down the line. It seems like a lot of you guys, though, in the comments did actually want Wayne Rooney. So it seems like he's a recurring theme in the comment section. So it looks like we are going to have to try and sign the England legend, even if it will be right at the end of his career maybe at some stage we'll have to get him into the side it just makes sense doesn't it you know england captain england's all-time top scorer why not Do you know what i'm saying so as we head into game number one of today's episode there is a few other things to cover today's episode we've got a bunch of games to come and overall it's going to be an episode filled with just i guess results and games and all sorts of good fun stuff to come we've got youth players coming through we've got you know scout reports coming back we've got injuries we've got so much to get through in today's episode so without further ado i'm going to get straight into the first game which is actually against exeter city now um there is a couple of stuff that I do want to touch upon the first thing as well as we go into this game here. There was also in that comment on about the uh, the Rooney thing. Uh, one of you guys did mention that we should play Isaac Turner in the midfield and stuff. So in that way it gives us a chance to play our strikers. But at the moment, Isaac Turner for today's episode will remain playing as a striker. But I am going to try him out later on down the line further back as a midfielder. But the first chance in the first game fell the way of Porter. And really, I have no idea how he missed. It it can be regarded, I guess, as the miss of the series so far. I mean, we're only four episodes in, but that was horrendous. We did everything right. We set him up. We got him into the position. All he had to do was finish it, and somehow he did that. No idea what happened. But then, luckily, I kept the pressure on Exeter. I tried something new this game. As soon as we came into it, I set it out, and I basically put the pressure on. I wanted to make Exeter uncomfortable. Of course, League 2... More mistakes happen when uh, defenders have the ball in areas like that. So my plan for this game was to try and put Exeter under more pressure than I have done with other teams. Defend on the front foot and it worked out for the first goal with Bowery putting in after some good work on the left-hand side from Cooper. Allowed us to steal the ball back. And as we ended off the game there, game number one, it was a 1-0 victory. Literally nothing happening in that one, Bowery. The first two chances coming in the first 10 minutes. We had nine shots in total, but quite a few of those were from areas in the field where... At League 2 level, it would take something pretty extraordinary to go in because I was, after I went one nil up, I kind of, I, I don't know, I just kind of took, put my foot off the gas a little bit and just like kind of held on the ball a little bit more, trying to be a bit more cautious, I guess, so then that way we didn't concede because the worst thing about it is conceding where you're in the game and you're totally dominating the game. So I tried to control the play after that. And in the end, we, we didn't really create too much on top of that. So out of the first game, we did pick up three points. And now it's going to be just us getting through games as fast as we possibly can in terms of trying to get back, you know, to, to some situation where we're almost promoted, basically. Because, of course, it would be great to get promotion in the first season. But we're very early doors in. And I said to you guys, after 10 games, I would make a prediction of where we are going to finish in this first season. Of course, we will go past 10 games in today's episode. So I will make a prediction. It will be later on. And uh, I'll tell you guys where I think we will end this first season off with crew. But luckily, we ended up simming this game against Carlisle at home in this one. And Grant picked up a red card after scoring a penalty as we went on to win the game two goals to nil. So it's looking like I can sim games as well. And still have a decent time with this one, which is weird because when you're coming into a side, of course, when I started the series off, I picked between Crew and Accrington Stanley because they were the two half, half star teams in the division. But it's like we're simming games with Crew and we're winning games as well when we sim them. We're not losing them. So I was kind of a bit strange, or it felt like a bit strange to see that. So when I sim this one against Wickham here away from home, this one was like a test. I wanted to see if it was the home advantage that was giving us the opportunity. Or if, in fact, we did have a side here that could win games when we were simming them. And when we went to 1-1 with Dickinson scoring an equaliser, cancelling out Akin Fenwa's first, I felt pretty confident. But then, Akin Fenwa struck again and scored the second in the 83rd minute. And that kind of, I guess, put a damper in things. Because at the time of going into that, Wickham were quite low down in the division. They were like 17th, 18th. So... In terms of form, you would maybe say that Crew had the chance to win that one and possibly had the team to win it. We just didn't play well enough. So 
as I said, you know, with these Sims, it can go hit and miss. Sometimes you have really good games where you go in a good run of Sims and you win all the games. Sometimes you have poor ones. So after that, I decided it would be a bad idea to Sim the one against Coventry, even though they were 14th place going into it. So I went ahead and played this one. We were six wins, two draws, and two defeats from our opening 10 games. Of course, we have passed that 10-game marker. I will make my prediction later on for you all. But heading into the 11th game here against Coventry, they are 14th. So on form... This should be a, uh, a crew Alexandra dominating game, I would call it. But we were slapped about by, uh, by earlier on by Grinsby. And uh, there's every chance that we're going to get slapped out again here by Coventry. Well, hopefully that won't be the case. But in terms of the team, you can see what I named. It's pretty much our strongest lineup in terms of rating right now. The only, of course, changes that you possibly could make would be Isaac Turner coming in. And maybe a couple of other players like, you know, Anne here, Anne Hearn Grant or something. If we got him into the side, that could only be possibly the other change that I would make. But in terms of the side, it's a very strong one. And Coventry almost made the score 1-0 inside the first eight minutes. Commiserations to them. It was a great move. And it came back off of the post. And it really should have been 1-0 to the home side. As we move into the 34 minute, felt like that was a foul on Cooper. But we got on with a play here. A little bit of luck involved in this one as Isaac Turner feeds Bowery. Bowery and manages to smash that one into the bottom corner. And we did make the score 1-0. As I said, I felt like it was a foul on Cooper. So that kind of made up for the fact that we didn't get an advantage or even the foul gate given to us. But then, of course, Bowery goes through after Isaac Turner sets him up. And we slot home to make the score 1-0. I've just realized as well, Isaac Turner did start this one. So I don't know what I said about bringing him in to the side. Of course, I meant Chris Porter was the other player that we substituted out to bring in Isaac, Port Isaac uh, Turner at the moment. So Porter on the bench rather than, of course, starting. So... It was Turner, but it was Turner's pass that set up the opening goal to our top scorer in the division so far in the form of Bowery. So not too bad there. As we move into the 45th minute, Turner again involved in this play. You can see he finds a good ball out wide to Cooper. Cooper, good little ball row, gets it back inside to Turner. Turner feeds it through to Hakib, who's through on goal, and he makes the score 2-0. Question marks raised by the Coventry defenders, though, because it was looking like it was possibly going to be an offside ruling there. But you can see Hakib just about stays on side there to stop the offside flag from being raised finishes it off with a nice right foot finish as well but once again it's that man Isaac Turner with the assist for this one as well so two assists in the games for him and uh, you can see the commentary defenders not too happy with that one because they felt that, that goal should have been ruled out as offside but nope referee stands firm says nope nothing wrong with it we'll take that to nil a lead into the halftime whistle as you move into the 90th minute though we had a chance to make the score three nil pickering off the bench complained about the fact he wasn't getting much game time recently he does well enough to find walker here at the back post but good defending from the coventry man on the line stops it being three and nil at that stage they were throwing the kitchen sink at us so we just had to apply uh, i guess absorb the pressure and then apply it on the counter and we managed to do it there in the 90th minute, but couldn't find the third. But it didn't matter because we did get the three points, the clean sheet, and a 2-0 win. So all in all, good day at the office. It, as I, said, I mean, you look at the match facts. It wasn't like we dominated the game. It was a very kind of, you know, one of those games where either side could have quite easily come away with something. I mean, if Coventry scored that one early chance they had where they hit the post, there's every chance that they might have gone on to win the game. But it just wasn't meant to be for them. There's a lot of draws as well happening. In the division there, you can see a fair few 2-1 results, but there was a lot of 1-1s one and uh, there was a 1-2-2 two, two in there, I think. So, yeah, a few weird results happening there. As we're simming, oh, sorry, we're doing a bit of trading to Turner and Pickering still. Turner going to 59 overall now. So, what I'm going to do regarding Turner, because, of course, you guys have said that you want me to play him in the midfield. I'm going to take out the finishing drill and replace it with, like, a passing dribbling. Uh, I think we've got passing dribbling on at the moment, and then I'm going to replace it with possibly long passing, seeing as how... If he's playing in centre mid, that's probably what we need from him, maybe not finishing wise. So, yeah, that's probably what I want to do regarding that. But moving forward into the next game then, guys, it will be against Stevenage here. You can see I put Porter back into the side. So, of course, even though Turner had a great performance last time out, I decided to give him a bit of a break on the bench. I don't want to rush him into the first 11 because I don't want him getting, like, you know, under too much pressure and stuff. So I feel like, you know, easing him in would be the best way for us to do it. So Porter comes back into the side and it was Grant to give us the lead inside this one in the 25th minute. Of course, Grant at the moment is the highest rated player at the side. Barry, though, grabs his fifth league goal of the season with a 42nd minute effort before grabbing his sixth in the 60th minute to make it 3-0 on course for a hat-trick. But sadly, 
couldn't manage to get it before the 90 minutes had ended. But still, two for Barry, one for Grant. And that is now Barry's sixth of the season, which is top scorer for us at the moment, which isn't too bad. I think he's fourth or fifth in the list in the division so far. There's a couple of people so far with nine, though. So he's a little bit off of that one. We did get a player through the Youth Academy called Alexander for the goalkeeping role. Threw him straight into the training in place of Pickering because, of course, at the moment... We don't have a reserve goalkeeper as a backup. So we need to get Alexander to a decent overall to the point where he can come into the team if we need him to do so. And he was picked up through the Youth Academy, uh, you know, kind of thing when the, uh, the scout came back. But I forgot to show you. Luckily, it, we didn't pick up that many players from it. It was not a very good one this month. So I'm hoping next month we get a few imports into the team. And then we decided to sim this one against Yeovil as well. Again, just testing our limits to see what the side is capable of without me having to play it. And uh, again, away games, we pick up a red card and then we end up going 1-0 down before finding a second goal to Yeovil. But once again, Yeovil at the time were about 17th, 18th place. So... I mean, I felt, again, pretty confident going into that. But once again, we fell to a defeat. So maybe I'll have to play most of our away games in this season. It's just kind of testing the waters at the moment, seeing what I can get away with. And then, of course, not, you know, worrying about anything else right now regarding that. But in terms of the uh, the training, it's going pretty well. Turner's uh, growing pretty nicely. And, of course, Alexander now should go uh, fairly quickly as well because he's a goalkeeper. And the goalkeeper's training is just so, so broken. Into the next game, though, we've got Notts County at home. This one, we should be able to win the game, in my opinion. And we ended up taking the lead through Hakeem in the fourth minute. They equalised, though, in the 21st minute. So not too great there. Then we move further on, and we did pick up... Oh, no, sorry, Notts County end up taking the lead in this one. They grab a second goal before we equalise. You'll see it in a few moments to come here now. As we made a couple of changes, three changes about to be made. And you can see it's two very quick goals there. Alessandra and then Grant equalising for us. So we ended up with a 2-2 draw there, which again is disappointing. But I'll take it because at the start of the season, I would have probably taken a top seven spot. You know, you get uh, playoffs, I think, for top seven. Um, I think, wait, no, might be wrong there. I just, anyway, I'll take a playoff spot. So... Anyways, I said I'd give you guys my prediction of where we're going to end in this first season, and I'm going to give you it now. I'm going to say that by the end of the 46 league games, Crew Alexandra will be in the top five. Top five. I want us to get playoffs. I think that's possible. You can see there, they're second going into the 15th league game of the season. Of course, it's very close with a lot of the teams, though. So there's every chance that you can drop, even if you lose one game and a few of the teams below you win a game. So... It's very close, but I'll feel pretty good if we can get a playoff spot even better if we finish top five. So my prediction for this season for Crew is going to be a top five finish for us. I think we've got the side to be able to do it, and I think we've got a side that is capable of winning the, the games that we need to require to get there. So that's my prediction. Anything less, I'll be slightly disappointed with the lads. But moving into the next game, guys, it's an interesting one because it's the other team that I could have picked in the form of Accrington Stanley. Of course, the other half-star team in the division. <laughs> And when we took the lead inside 56 minutes through our top scorer, Bowery, things were looking pretty decent, you know. We took the lead. It was a very quiet first half. It was a, a half of football in which neither side were brilliant. People were misplacing passes, and passes weren't going to the players you wanted to. But after all, it is League 2 football. So when Hakeem set up Bowery and Bowery made the score 1-0, I felt pretty good. But of course, football is a funny old game and anything can happen even if there's five minutes remaining. So that's Bowery's seven for the season. And we move into the last eight minutes where Bowery's on the ball again here, finds here Grant. He gets through, looks to cut the ball across to Turner, who's waiting in the middle off the bench today and unfortunately couldn't do it. It's going to be a corner ball, but Grant stood over this one, finds its way to Hakib. Hakib with a nice little uh, cutback. He ends up crossing a great cross towards the middle. And there's little Isaac Turner with a header, which is not something I'm going to be saying too often in this series because he's not the tallest of players, but he just wanted it more than anybody else in the box. And to his credit, Hakeem, that was a fantastic cross straight into the head of Isaac Turner. And all he had to do was direct it goalwards and it was going to go in the back of the net. So for Accrington, you can see a few of their players disheartened, but to be fair to them, they never kind of... I guess, did that much in the way of attacking. It was a very boring game. The two chances that came, we scored them both. So, yeah, again, it was a kind of weird game, this one. Neither side were brilliant. And then, of course, we couldn't keep a clean sheet because me defensively, in the last few minutes, concentration dipped and Akron and Stanley get a headed goal in off the crossbar. So, luckily, 
and the Isaac Turner goal did go in, because otherwise we might have been seeing a different story here. We might have only come away with a point, but we don't. We get the full three points on offer today. And overall, I'd say the episode has been pretty decent for us. It leaves us in the top three, at least, for the, uh, for the end of today's episode. And as it stands, things are looking pretty decent. Now, before we move forward, guys, of course, we are coming towards the back end of today's episode. So if you have enjoyed it, a like, I'm greatly appreciated. I have ordered a few different pieces of equipment so I can maybe use some face cam on this series in a few episodes' time. Just waiting on that to come, of course. It is a bit delayed with Christmas being just around the corner. So, of course, a few of my deliveries are being a bit delayed. But when that comes, guys, and it's all set up, hopefully I can get some face cam for you all to enjoy on this series. Anyways, guys, that's going to be how we end today's episode off. As I said earlier, did enjoy it. Like, rate, and greatly appreciated. Uh, if you haven't already, click the little bell next to the subscribe button and you never miss an upload that goes live on the channel. I really do appreciate all of your guys' support. I always say it, guys, but truthfully... It is amazing to see all of you enjoying my videos as much as I do in putting them out for you guys. So thank you so much for all of that. I will see you all again for the next episode of our Road to Glory career mode very, very soon. Make sure you don't miss it, guys. Catch you all later. Adios.